and since the mistake has happened. You want to point that out to them. Third thing you want to do is you want to promise that it won't happen again. So you're going to tell them whether you think it's going to happen again or not. You want to tell them that it's not going to happen again. Whatever the issue you had, whether it was an employment issue or an unexpected expense that caused you to be late this time, that you have rectified it, you've corrected it, it's not going to happen again, and you'll be able to make your payments on time. That's what you want to do with your letter or within your phone call. Now, I'm going to say if you call somebody and uh, they seem like they have an attitude up front, that might not be the person you want to talk to. You can freely hang up on them if you want to. You can ask to be moved to a supervisor. You can hang up. You can call back, whatever it is. But please get somebody that appears, at least appears to be pleasant, that may work with you. Because um, I tell you, I have done this too many times. And oftentimes you can tell from the time the person answers the phone if it's going to be a pleasant conversation or not. So you want to do that. So what else can you do? If you have already have this particular late payment on your on your um, on your report, here's the third thing you can do. Actually, you know what? I'm a pause. I'm going to give you the third thing um, after this. So we're going to do the question of the day because we're halfway through the show. At this point, we're going to do question of the day. And before I do question of the day, I'm going to uh, shout out a couple more people. Vernon Robinson, he celebrated his birthday as well. Should have got his shout out last week. So happy birthday to you, Vernon. Tiffany Andrews on Monday, she celebrated her birthday. So happy birthday to you, Tiffany Andrews. Um, Hollis Thomas, one of the nicest, nicest men I've ever met in my life. Happy birthday to you. He celebrated a birthday last week. A former co-worker of mine, Mike Grove. Yes, Mike Grove. And I already know that he celebrated his birthday in Puerto Rico um, this week. So happy birthday to you. I hope you can. As a matter of fact, I already know. I already know you can get the show while you're in Puerto Rico as well. So happy birthday to you, uh, Mike Grove. All right. So let's get to the question of the day. And uh, then I'll finish out the last one of the things that you can do to um help you uh, avoid not avoid necessarily get the um your late payments but what you can do if you already have one so question of the day what does it mean what does it mean if some of your info was found on the dark web so i got this question through um messenger on facebook through uh 800 credit score man and uh, it came from Eric, and I do not know where Eric is from. So you know how I like to pick a place. So I'm going to pick Pittsburgh for whatever reason. I usually like tropical places, but let's pick Pittsburgh. So Eric from Pittsburgh, he asks, what um, does it mean if some of your info was found on the dark web? Well, first of all, if uh, I, don't, I don't know how he got this information, but I know there are people out there that say they'll look for you um, and, and see if your info is on the dark web. If your info is on the dark web, then that means people have your info and basically it's up for sale. Where did it come from on the dark web? Who knows? Who knows where it came from? Could it came from the Equifax breach? Could it came simply from somebody at your bank that was quitting and they gathered information before they left and they're attempting to sell your info? I happen to know because of our um, exchange on uh, Messenger that they don't have a lot of his information. They don't have the pertinent stuff like his social security number um, or his address, but they do have some information about Eric. But if you have uh, found out that you have information on the dark web or anywhere that's floating out there and you found out that you have that, you need to do a few things. First, you might want to uh, consider placing a freeze on your credit report. So you can place a freeze on your credit report. It costs 10 bucks typically to freeze it. It'll cost you another 10 bucks to unfreeze it. Equifax may still be giving away free freezes for your credit report, but it's only for Equifax. It's not for TransUnion. It's not for Experian. So you want to do that. You want to make sure that you um, put a freeze on there. Um, that means that if you are trying to get credit anytime soon, when they try to pull up your credit report, they're not going to see anything. I mean, it's basically going to be blank. They won't see anything at all. They won't be able to get that you have any accounts. It'll look like you don't even exist. So just be aware of that if you're trying to get anything anything else. So make sure you do that. You put a freeze on your credit report. Now, you can also most likely contact the police department and let them know that you're aware that this information is out there. It's almost preemptive because no one has gotten his, his information just yet. But if it has happened to you and they've, they've gotten your information, you need to file a um, police report that's going to be um, instrumental in you getting out of whatever debt they may have created for you by using your credit. 
it's going to be um, in very important for you to file that police report. So make sure you file a police report as well. And then if you have people contacting you saying you owe them or what have you, then you definitely need to um, to talk to them. You need to talk to them. Um, you need to make sure that they're legit um, as well. Make sure that those people are legit that you're talking to. And then you need to go look at your own credit report. And maybe you should do this even earlier. But go look at your own credit report. One of the first places I like to go, if there's any question at all, is to the inquiries portion. So you go to inquiries and make sure that there are any new inquiries. Anytime anybody looks at your credit report, especially if you're going to be getting credit, which is a hard inquiry, it's going to show up on your credit report. It doesn't take 30 days for it to show up on your credit report. It may take 30 days or more for an account to show up on your credit report. But as far as that inquiry is concerned, it's going to show up on your credit report. If you did not apply for credit anywhere, then you know that somebody is trying to get an account with you. On that inquiry, you should be able to see who it is and maybe even get some information as far as at least a P.O. box or physical address and maybe even a phone number. And you need to give them a call and see what in the world is going on so you can stop it. They may have gotten an account in your name. Like I said, it won't show up. The account itself wouldn't show up on your credit report for 30 to 45 days and sometimes even longer. I've closed on a home myself and it didn't show up on my credit report for three or four months. Um, so, you know, it's not necessarily instantaneous. It's not going to happen the next month. And you don't want that to happen to you when it comes to, you know, somebody stealing your information. So make sure you do those things. Um, Eric, it was a pleasure going back and forth to you, Eric. I'm calling you from Pittsburgh. Matter of fact, um, you listening to the show, hit me back. Let me know where you are from. Maybe I'll correct it next week. So again, if you have questions, you can contact me 800 at credit score, man.com 800 at creditscoreman.com. You can email me there. That's 800 at creditscoreman.com. You can always catch me on any of those um, social media sites, whether it's 800 Credit Score Man on IG or if it's 800 Credit Score Man on Facebook. And of course, you can catch me on Twitter at credit score underscore man. And you can um, ask your questions there. And you might be a part of the 800 Credit Score Man show family. So, Eric. You are officially a part of the 800 Credit Score Man Show family. Thank you so very much. I appreciate you um, listening and asking a question. All right, so let's jump back to um, things that you can do if you already have late payments. So the last thing I'm going to tell you about late payments is you can file a dispute. Yes, you can file a dispute. You need to file your dispute with all three credit bureaus. doesn't do you any good to just file with one. They don't talk to each other. There are three different companies. So it doesn't do you any good to just do it with one thinking that the other two are going to pick it up. It doesn't work that way. So you need to file your um, dispute with TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian. You can mail it in or you can do it online. Depends on what you want to do. You can do it uh, either way. Um, you do give up a few rights if you do it online versus doing it in the um, via mail, but typically it's not an issue, but it could be. So you got questions about that, contact me again, 800 at creditscoreman.com. Uh, and then, so, it, and especially, especially if it's something that's older or it's a closed account, you want to go ahead and file a dispute. If it's really, really old, and especially if it's a closed account, file that dispute saying that you weren't um, late. Maybe you don't remember if you were late, um, but file that dispute and make sure. And this way you put the onus on your creditor, your former creditor. Um, you put the onus on them to prove to the three credit bureaus that, yes, you were late. Now, oftentimes, especially with a closed account, um, they won't even bother to respond. That's good for you because if they don't respond in those 30 days, if you mailed it in, they get 35 days. If they don't respond in that time frame, then possibly it'll come off of your credit report. Having those things removed, having any negative item removed from your credit report is going to be very good, extremely good for your, um, for your credit score. So make sure you do those things um, to help you when it comes to your credit score. All right, let me give a couple more shout outs and then I'm going to end with some things that you can do to help avoid, to help you avoid um, being late when it comes to your, uh, your credit. I got to shout out Damon King. I 
this is probably probably the first time a king is on this show and is not related to me so damon king i'm gonna call him cousin anyway um since his last name is king he celebrated a birthday last wednesday so happy birthday to you uh damon sheena morris harris she celebrated a birthday as well so happy birthday to you sheena and the beautiful robin page celebrated a birthday so happy birthday to you robin as well all right so let's get to some of the things that will help you avoid these late payments so these are some simple things that you can do to help avoid being late the first thing is automatic deduction now if you listen to the show before i've talked a little bit about automatic deduction i'm not a big big fan of it because i don't necessarily want somebody in my account if it's going to be short if it's going to be close to short you know i'm gonna forget that this is the 20th of the month and that bill's coming out and I thought I had 600 bucks, and now I look up and I only have 300 bucks. You know, that's an issue for me. Might be an issue for you, but automatic deduction. I do use it for a couple of accounts. You know, I used it for my student loan, which is paid off. Thank goodness. Thank God it, it is paid off. But I use that for um, for that. And, you know, it had been coming out for years. So use automatic dedu- deduction. That can help you avoid being, being late. And you can set this up uh, with most of your creditors that you owe. You don't necessarily have to go through your bank necessarily to do it. You can set it up with your creditors for automatic deduction. So that's one thing you can do. Another thing you can do is you can set up recurring deductions from your bank account. So I know with my bank, I can go in and I can say, yep, I want to pay this bill. This is the amount and I want to pay this particular amount every month on whatever date that is. So you can do that. You can set it up. It'll come out every month. And then you won't have to worry about going back in and doing it every month. So you can do that. Might not work so well necessarily with credit cards unless you're paying over the minimum. If you're paying over the minimum, because if you use your credit card, you know that um, what you owe might go back and forth or go up a little bit. Um, But you can set up recurring deductions on things. If you got a car note. You know, car note's the same. It's not going to change. Your mortgage is the same. It's not going to change. You can set up those recurring deductions with your bank. Um, You can also do that same thing, basically, like an automatic deduction with those with those people as well. So um, so it's very similar to the first tip that I just gave you. um, But this way you're using your banking institution to do it, which means to me, I can stop it better easier faster than i could if i had to call a company and do all those things i can stop it if i wanted to do so if i'm controlling it from my own bank a third thing you can do i have it listed in my notes as a b and c but the third thing you can do is uh you can pay the bill when you receive it pay that bill when you get it not when it's due so that would eliminate you being late every time if you pay it when you actually get the bill in your hand, um, this saves you the headache of remembering um, several different due dates. I have done this um, for sure, uh, especially back in the day when I had like four or five credit cards with balances on all of them, car note, house note, student note, all of these things and all different due dates. Then if you just pay it when that bill comes in, if you've got the money, Go ahead and pay it when the bill comes in. And so when it comes due, it's already done, right? So you won't be late if you pay it when the bill actually gets in your hand or if you even get an uh, online bill. You know, you see that email and it says that, boom, you are, um, you know, your payment is due, you know, 15, 20 days from now. Go ahead and make that payment. Make the payment right away. That'll avoid you being late. Here's another thing that you can do. You can use a calendar and alerts um, on your phone. Uh, for your due dates so if you don't want to do any of these things you want to do the automatic stuff you don't want to you know do all of these things you can use your calendar and alerts everybody almost everybody has a smartphone right now you can do that if you're old school you write things in um, your calendar write it in a calendar a physical calendar as well Um, write your due dates down and then that way you'll know when you look at your calendar what your list is what you need to do for the day what you need to do for the week you know what it is and you can go ahead and make those payments so personally typically i don't um use a calendar all the time but i do set those alerts you know so i told you before i used to i used to never pay my cable bill on time um which is not on your credit report so your cable bill is not on your credit report but it's a bill nonetheless so I use my calendar for that bill and I set an alert 
um, because I was tired of throwing away that money. You know, I was throwing away money on late fees and reconnect fees every month because I just wouldn't pay that stupid cable bill. And it was just something that I did. But it took me some time to get used to it because it wasn't something that I was used to doing. But now, but now I'm no longer late. I don't have an issue. I don't have to, um, you know, go back and keep looking. I know when that bill is due. I know when I'm going to pay it. Um, and I set that alert.